Hello, I'm Dr. Fong. And I'm Dr. Lowen. And we want to share with you today some information about fMRI and how we at Cognitive Effects use fMRI throughout our entire process and treatment here at uh, CFX. So what is fMRI? fMRI is an advanced new imaging technique that allows us to look at how the brain is functioning and how blood is flowing and how it's being metabolized or used by different parts of the brain. In many cases, including concussion, regular MRI is not sensitive enough to pick up on these micro insults or micro damage uh, that can occur to, uh, to the blood vessels. And so many people are told that their MRI is normal or they're just fine or um, there's nothing wrong with them. And this is absolutely not the case. Having spoken to thousands of concussion patients, I know that they're struggling significantly. And so the, the regular imaging is not able to pick this up. However, with functional MRI, we are able to see how those micro insults and micro changes can affect how efficiently blood flows in the brain. And consequently, how that can affect how that patient feels and functions overall. So blood flow is extremely important. Dr. Lowen. In fact, the underpinnings of how the brain functions efficiently is a concept called neurovascular coupling, or NVC. Neurons need a lot of blood in order to work, in order for the brain to work efficiently. Now, when the brain doesn't have enough blood in certain areas involved in memory, in filtering out noise and light, you can end up with these concussion symptoms. Functional MRI allows us to see where neurovascular coupling is working and where it's not. Now the question comes, how do we know when and where neurovascular coupling isn't working? And that is, a, we can tell that with a modified form of functional MRI called FNCI, or functional neurocognitive imaging. So Dr. Fong, how do we use functional neurocognitive imaging or FNCI to guide treatment here at CFX? That is a great question, Dr. Lowen. So fMRI allows us again to see how efficiently blood is being metabolized in the brain. So we're looking at almost 60 different regions with our FNCI and we can identify what parts of the brain might be metabolizing blood efficiently, metabolizing it not efficiently at all, or maybe overusing or over uh, metabolizing uh, blood in different areas and essentially maybe stealing blood away from other areas that could be using it. So for example, some of the areas that we look at clearly are frontal lobe function, which involves just some thinking, some higher order processing. Uh, we're looking at some language areas. We're looking at vision areas. And we're also looking at what we call subcortical or the part that's uh, uh, in the middle of the brain that is very important for uh, information processing. Our treatment targets all of these different areas and it depends on whether or not that particular structure is hyperactivating or overutilizing blood, hypoactivating or not using enough blood, or uh, within normal limits. And our individual treatment is tailored to all these different areas and the directionality in which that blood is flowing. So Dr. Lowen, what does treatment look like at CFX and what types of therapies do we offer? Excellent question, Dr. Fong. So at Cognitive FX, we use a multimodal approach to treating concussion. What we require is for such a complex organ as the brain, we need just as complex of a team. Now you notice here we've taken that previous figure and we've shrunk it down a little bit because we want to focus on what types of specialized therapies we do at Cognitive FX to treat neurovascular coupling dysfunction in every part of the brain. For example, we have therapists on hand that treat neurovascular coupling when it comes to vision or vestibular systems. Issues in vision and vestibular systems can cause symptoms like dizziness, visual overstimulation, light sensitivity, etc. But we also have therapies that target multiple different systems. For example, DynaVision, which is a very advanced technology which can work on vision symptoms in addition to memory and other executive areas. 
We also have therapists who have expertise in cognitive therapy and sensory motor therapy, which is key for treating neurovascular coupling in areas in the brain involved in information filtering, filtering out light and noise, information processing, and language or speech. In addition, we have therapists on hand that treat the more physical side of post-concussion syndrome. These include headaches, muscle tension, and other physical symptoms that come with post-concussion syndrome. And then finally, we have other therapists that treat kind of the summative neurovascular coupling within the brain, our occupational therapist. And then a key part of treatment is also the psychological aspect of post-concussion syndrome. So in summary, Dr. Lowen and I wanted to share with you a quick overview of the process here at CFX. So to start, each and every patient receives state-of-the-art diagnosis, and this is aided with the expertise of neuroscience PhDs, neuropsychology PhDs, uh, psychologists, uh, neurosurgery MDs, um, neuroradiology, as well as nursing. That diagnosis gets translated to individualized treatment for each patient. Each patient's uh, FNCI is different, and we have to make sure that each patient's therapy is tailored to them. And so as we stated previously, we have cognitive therapists, physical therapists, neuromuscular therapists, OTs, psychologists, et cetera, that are experts in their own field and know how to read that FNCI and tailor treatment for that patient individually. That then leads to outcome data. Dr. Lowen? We at CFX use both objective and subjective data in order to interpret our outcomes. These outcomes are based on our FNCI, our functional neurocognitive imaging, those 60 or more different brain regions that we look at on the FNCI, as well as subjective reports, or PCSS, or a post-concussion symptom scoring scale. Both of these are utilized to tell how well our patients did during that week, and it allows us to see that we get an overall improvement of 75% during the week of treatment itself. This outcome data is then used for CFX's research. We not only publish the data that we collect, but we also analyze it and look at different indices, including how do patients improve in the long term. We also are looking to analyze further types of data. This includes hormones, this includes sleep, and other indices of overall health after treatment at CFX. Summatively, this research then feeds into our diagnostic protocols supporting the entire pipeline of how CFX functions. We hope that you have learned something from our presentation, hope that we have answered some of your questions. Please feel free to give us a call or check out our website. And uh, thank you so much for your attention.